It's been over three months since I posted my first challenge, and in that time, I've never done any video past Gen 3. Well, today that's changing because I'm finally doing a playthrough in Gen 4. Since this is my first ever Gen 4 solo challenge, I decided to take things a bit easy and just kind of see how difficult the game's going to be for future runs. Because Pokemon Platinum is seen as a fairly challenging game compared to the others, I decided to see just how easy I can make it by using an origin form Giratina. This thing has crazy HP and great stats all around. So, how fast can I beat the game? Well, let's find out. Oh yeah, I'm also going to be including a loss counter just like I did with the other legendary solo runs, because I think that makes it a little more interesting. Okay, first things first, oh god, I forgot how much slower Gen 4 was. Seriously, Gen 4 is like the slow generation or something. Especially with Diamond and Pearl, those games are borderline unplayable. The fact that I'm playing at regular speed on this emulator is also going to be extra salt on the wound. Okay, after a lot of mashing A, it's time to fight our rival. But he went down with just two dragon breaths. Okay, well, I was expecting the beginning of the game to be a breeze, so no surprise. And just like the rival Rorik was another one-shot sweep. I got I got the ominous wind boost on my first turn, so that guaranteed me the win. I say that as if I'm not already using a broken legendary. Well, you get the point. After a bit, time for our first Team Galactic fight of many, Mars. I actually almost lost this fight since while Zubat was a two-shot, Brogly outspeeds and has faint attacks, so after three dragon breaths I win, but at low health. My ghost typing might actually be a bad thing. Before I can make it to the second gym, however, I have to escort Cheryl out of Eterna Forest. Man, I forgot just how many extra side quests the newer games make you do. I haven't played through the Sinnoh games a lot, but I do remember there being a lot of these random escort missions. Well, better start getting used to them. Okay, on to Gardenia. I'm beginning to realize that this may not be another Rayquaza run since I'm considerably weaker in comparison. I mean, to be fair, my attack power is lower. I use all five of my ominous wins against Turtwig and Cherim, but even after using them all, I don't get the boost, so now I have to just go for Dragon Breath. Unfortunately, Roserade outspeeds, and it's looking to be yet another another close match, and I paralyze her right before I would have probably lost. Wow, that was way too close. And again, we have yet another galactic fight. I one-shot the Zubat, and then for Skuntank, I accidentally used Ominous Wind, but I get the boost. The next turn, I use Ancient Power, and I get another boost. Well, that was lucky. Again, I would have lost if I didn't get those boosts, since they love using Dark Types. Come to think of it, I'm actually kind of worried for the final Cyrus fight. After some more traveling, time for Fantina. I was expecting this fight to be pretty easy since I have Ominous Wind. I one shot Duskull, and then for Miss Magius, it hits me hard with Shadow Ball, lowers my special defense, then the next turn I faint. Oh. That kind of sucks. Well, the special defense drop was probably what did it. I try again right after, and it goes much better. This time, Miss Magius doesn't get the special defense drop, so I take it out with 11 HP remaining, and I thankfully outspeed and one-shot the Haunter. With that, I get the TM for Shadow Claw. Finally, a reliable ghost move. Immediately after that, it's time to fight Rival 2. Thankfully, I healed just before, since I don't know where all the rival battles are in this game. I one-shot a Staravia, then two-shot Prinplup with Ominous Wind. I use Ominous Wind on Rosalia and get the boost, but it honestly doesn't matter. Last is just Ponyta, so I take it out with one Ancient Power. I really need to get moves with more PP. Right after crushing him, he gives us an incredible strategy. Make sure to never miss and never get hit. Well, I'd say that's genius. Can't believe I never thought of that. And time to test this strategy out with Maylene. Oh wait, I can't one-shot her team. Awesome. Well, at least her Meditite and Machoke can't actually hurt me, but I'm worried about Lucario. It uses Metal Claw and gets an attack boost first turn, so now it's doing quite a lot. I pick a few random moves to see which one does the most, but they all do about the same. Again, after a bit, I win with red health. On the way to Pastoria, I encountered a strange colored weasel. Huh, must be some sort of emulator glitch. It's fine, I just take it out to prevent any problems. Anyway, right before I can get to the gym, time to battle my rival again. He leads with Staravia, which sucks because now my best moves are physical, so Intimidate is a problem. I take it out in two turns, and second is his level 36 Prinplup. Like, just evolve it. After that is Rosalia, but I surprisingly one-shot it. Last is Ponyta, but two Shadow Claws take it out. Now that that's over with, time for Wake. He leads with Gyarados, so my attack is lowered. I one-shot it with Shockwave, and second is Floatzel, so I'm scared. His crunch does a lot, and he outspeeds, but I managed to take it out with about a quarter of my health remaining. Last is some creature that isn't Wooper, but he thankfully can't do much, so I win with barely any health. Man, these battles have been crazy close. 
After that, I get the secret potion, which allows me to clear the headaches from a group of Psyduck. Huh, I think I've heard of somebody whose favorite Pokemon is Psyduck, but I can't remember who. Time for the first Cyrus battle. He leads with Sneasel, but I surprisingly don't one-shot it with Dragon Claw, so it gets in a Screech, which could be bad. Second is Murkrow, and he gets in a big feint attack before going down. Last is Golbat, but I thankfully outspeed as he brings me to 11 HP. Oh my god, we are way more frail than I thought. Hopefully I don't have to grind soon, that would really suck. And on my way to the 6th gym, next is Rival 4, and I was worried since now he has a fully evolved team. Of course, Staraptor cuts my attack, so I have to use Shockwave, which thankfully one-shots it. Second is Heracross, and it gets a crit Night Slash doing close to half my health. I take it out, and third is Empoleon. Shockwave does a little less than half its health, so I have to use Ominous Wind and then Shockwave to take it out, but now I'm low. Thankfully, Roserade just went for Toxic Spikes for some reason, and then his Rapidash missed Fire Spin. After that is Byron, and I don't have a good plan here. His Pokemon all have bad special defense though, so my plan, I guess, is just to spam Ominous Wind on his Magneton a few times and get a boost. I get that, and second is Steelix, but an Ominous Wind and Shadow Ball take it out. Last is Bastiodon, but I get a special defense drop letting me win the battle. Surprising that the gym leader who resists all of my moves ended up being really easy. Right after though, we have to go to the lake to fight Saturn. He was really easy though, since he didn't have anything that straight up countered us. And then we fight Mars again at Lake Verity. This time though, she was a lot easier than she was at the Windworks, probably because now I have much better moves. And now we have to go to Snowpoint to check up on our rival, and oh my god, I forgot just how bad this part of the game was. Yeah, having different climates is cool and all, but having to walk twice as slow in the snow is just so annoying. Well, not as annoying as the fog, but that's on a whole nother level. After a good few decades of traveling through the snow, it's time to fight Candace, and again, I was a bit worried since we're part dragon, but she was surprisingly easy. I one-shot Sneasel, Frostlass, and Piloswine, and then for Abomasnow, she just went for Woodhammer instead of, you know, an Ice-type move that would have been super effective. After finding out that our rival lost, we head to the Galactic HQ to fight Cyrus, and yeah, he was super easy again. His Sneasel went down in one Dragon Claw, then Hontro managed to get a big feint attack on me, but it went down right after. Crobat does outspeed though, and it made me flinch with Bite, but it was again another easy two-shot. And then shortly after, we have to take a visit to the depths of hell because some depressed guy felt jealous about other people's happiness. Eh, it doesn't matter though, he was a one-shot sweep. Surprised that he was actually easier this time around. Now that that's all over with, it's time to fight the last gym leader, Volkner, but he was just another one-shot sweep with Earth Power. Well, this has been going a lot easier now. Right before we can fight the Elite Four, we have to fight our rival one last time. He leads with Staraptor, but one Thunderbolt takes it out. Empoleon was again a two-shot, but he didn't do much damage. Roserade goes down in one Dragon Pulse, and then Snorlax was barely a two-shot, but again, he couldn't really do anything. Last is Rapidash, but one Earth Power finishes the fight. Let's take a look at our final stats. I'm pretty confident that I can win at this level, although I know that the Elite Four are really high level in this game, so we'll see. Alright, let's do this. First is Aaron, but I mean, he's a Bug-type specialist, so yeah, no troubles here. The only Pokemon I was remotely worried about was Drapion, but it was a one-shot. Second is Bertha. I just barely don't one-shot Whiskash, but she misses Zen Headbutt, so now I'm at Gliscor with full health. I barely don't one-shot it again, which sucks as she goes for Ice Fang. Third is Hippodon, and it sets up a Sandstorm with its ability, then gets in a big crunch to take me out. Okay, well maybe I just need to be a few levels higher to be able to one-shot them consistently. I try again at level 67, and I still strangely don't one-shot Whiskash as it uses Sandstorm. Interesting. I take it out, and then I do one-shot Gliscor, so we're at Hippodon. I use Dragon Pulse and get a lucky crit. Not sure if I would've one-shot it without the crit, but I'll take it. Then Rhyperior uses Rock Wrecker to deal huge damage since it survives in Earth Power. Thankfully, last is just Golem, so I one-shot it. That was closer than I thought it would be. Third is Flint, and he actually has a Fire-type team this time. Still, he was yet another joke. The only member of his team who actually did any damage was Magmortar, but he just went for a weak flamethrower. Fourth is Lucian, but I mean, come on, I'm a ghost type, so I one-shot his entire team besides Bronzong, but it just used Calm Mind, so I won without losing any health. 
But if you thought the Elite Four was too easy, don't you worry, because Cynthia is not going to be fun, and not because of her Garchomp. It's actually her easiest member in this battle. You see, three of her Pokemon have super effective moves against us, and none of them can go down in one hit at this level. Yeah, I wanted to end this at level 69 because that would have been a very nice level to end off, but I guess it's time to level up a little bit more. Okay, level 73. I one-shot Spiritomb this time, which was probably just a good range, and then I one-shot Garchomp, of course, then one-shot Lucario, and let's see how we do against Milotic, and oh no, it's not a one-shot, but she uses Mirror Coat. Okay, I might need to teach a physical move. Let's try again. I try again, but this time with Return. I was right, Spiritomb is just barely out of range, so last time I must have had some great luck. I lose quite a bit of health, then take out Garchomp and Lucario in one hit, so that's good. Now for Milotic, I use Return, but it goes for Ice Beam this time. Well, would have been nice if you did that last time. Anyway, I take it out, and fit this Roserade, and Return is surprisingly doing about as much as Dragon Pulse, which is really strange. So yeah, I take it out in two hits, and then last is Togekiss, so I use Return, it goes for Air Slash, and I finish the fight with one more Thunderbolt at just 55 HP. And that's it, Pokemon Platinum with one Origin Form Giratina. That ended up being a lot harder than I expected. I guess being part Ghost wasn't all that helpful. I'm actually surprised though that I was dealing a lot less damage than I thought I would. Like, a lot of things were just barely out of range of being a one-shot, even when I had the level lead. Still, I managed to win at just about 9 hours, which in this run was the actual in-game time since I couldn't play on Fast Forward like I usually do. Anyway, if you enjoyed, make sure to subscribe and let me know if you want to see more of these Gen 4 runs in the future, since there's something different. Well, thanks for making it to the end, and I'll see you all soon.